Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The widow makes an offering of her whole life, uh, her whole being, her whole living, is how we might uh, translate our gospel uh, today. When the widow makes her offering, she undertakes a bodily act. Her body's inner pain and scars of misfortune, financial ruin and injustice are all brought forward with the two uh, copper coins. Her corporality is visible and her presence highlights injustice. Two coins and her body testify to her discrimination as a labeled widow. It's true that the search for truth must be willing to hear the voice of suffering, uh, something that Cornell West often says. But sometimes those voices are silent and all that is left is presence in the face of such injustice. The widow's body bears just such a witness, bringing the words of uh, theologian Rowan Williams into the conversation about this parable, we might say the widow's body reveals the dimension of unseen relations and connections in and between all things and their source in God, that intimate uh, and dynamic relationship uh, evoked by the Greek uh, theologians. To see her is to see her body as co-figuring the body of Christ, a very embodied logos, uh, a logos that preempts accepted social cues codified by the powers that be. The widow in this liturgy of offering returns our eyes and minds to her parentological state, that her being that she possesses that exists prior to the labeling, objectification, and codification of her as widow, woman, mother, what have you. Holding the parable this way, we're able to consider the widow as not raised and liberated by her own action or offering or by Christ's parable pointing out the obvious. No, instead the widow is to be seen as imago Dei, the image of God by her very bodily existence. Her actuality places a claim upon the divine's image. Here is Scandalon and Moria, right? The, the scandal and foolishness of the gospel. Theologian James Cone suggested that at the heart of this, this theological concept of the image of God is a, a fellowship of human liberation. Such a notion breaks the parable open again, and we may hope to accept the widow as expositing, if you will, the meaning of God's liberation as she reflects Christ's own offering. God's claim upon her as one of the people of God, an image of God at once individual, corporate, and transcendent, reminds us she is an inheritance of the freedom of Egypt. Cohn might say, here is where theology begins. Her bodily presence, her holding the two coins, her letting go, the, the widow's bodily momentum emerge as a unbinding liberation from the fine-robed powers over her. Her bodily act broadcasts her birthright in God's liberating kingdom. She is one of God's kingdom, God's people, God's kin. Here is the mystery of personhood, not the personhood of a widow, a woman, or mother, but the, cor the, but the corrupted image of God by uh, uh, physically abused by corrupt economic system and powers which use the power to name as a power to uh, commoditize what little the widow has. This is a, a parabolic relationship to the victim's body the widow's body, her 
bodily presence with Christ's body, eternally in parallel uh, in cosmic time. Uh, Note the passage of prophecy uh, uh, regarding Jesus' own persecution and crucifixion and punishment uh, that comes in the very next chapter. Liberation begins with her sacrifice uh, uh, pressed upon her, yet offered freely. A bodily counterpart to Jesus' own suffering of his flesh and sorrows and body for the world. In this, there is reconfigured a positive frame from which to begin, where blackness, brownness, deafness, blindness, orphan, widow, no longer are prefigured or disfigured as deficient by some fraudulent normative frame. Instead, the widow's bodily presence dispels the false faith in human constructions of society. By making her bodily offering, uh, she overturns oppressive narratives about who she is uh, from those outside of God's vision. We are given the same opportunity to sacrifice our living by embodying our birthright, the image of Christ, instead of placing our trust in the outer accoutrement of religion. The challenge goes still further, inviting us to image Jesus' own example in offering this parable and narrative So to discover, if you will, such persons in similar situations and recognize the image of God in them, and thus finding a means to highlight their plight as a Christ figure in our midst. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.